Hi there. In this video, uh, I'm going to be looking at the influences on operation management and more specifically looking at globalization, technology and quality expectations. Uh, so to start with uh, looking at globalization, now this refers to the re uh, the removal of uh, barriers to global activities. Now, it's obviously not physically, but metaphorically, the world really is getting smaller. Um, you know, 50, 60 years ago, for example, if you wanted to travel from one country, uh, say for example, Australia, and travel to Europe, you're looking at quite a substantial uh, cost and quite a substantial time commitment. Uh, now with the advent of new technologies and uh, um, uh, more competition, it's actually mean, uh, meant that you can do so a lot quicker and a lot, uh, a lot cheaper. Um, it also means that you can communicate now um, across the world uh, a lot quicker as well. What may have, uh, may have taken weeks for a letter to arrive from Europe to Australia, uh, now technologies such as Skype, such as Facebook, um, have allowed you to, to communicate instantly at any time of day. Um, with this in mind, uh, businesses um, also need to be aware of this globalization. And because there's such an orientation now uh, from businesses towards global consumers, towards um, tapping into markets from around the world to try and broaden their market share by, uh, you know, capturing um, new consumers, it means that now there's an also an orientation towards global production facilities. Uh, an Australian company hoping to uh, capture the market in China will um, think about actually opening up uh, a factory in China uh, in order to make the production closer to uh, the actual consumers, which then will ultimately bring down uh, the costs for them as well, making their business products uh, more enticing and more likely to be purchased. Uh, if they're looking at uh, capturing, um, uh, you know, the, the market in Germany, they might open up a factory in Germany or in nearby Switzerland or France, uh, wherever it is they can get um, the most efficiency uh, in order to try and capture that market. Um, it's also meant that supply chain uh, management of the global web is now a, a very big concern for the operations function. Um, what this means is they need to have a network or a global web of reliable supplies. And by reliable, we mean ones that are cost effective, that uh, deliver their, um, their supplies on time um, and, and uh, do so in a uh, in a civil uh, you know um, civilized manner that when you communicate with them, um, they need to have that network of reliable supplies in the supply chain. Um, now, a supply chain is really the the variety or the range of supplies a business has and the relationship. Okay, um, like I said, the relationship needs to be positive. It needs to be civilized. Um, that's the only way that the business can can function is if they have a a good relationship. Um, what globalization has also meant, though, is that now there's um, really two, two types of businesses in the world. There's imitators and there's innovators. Um, so imitators, for example, they, they have similar products to their competitors. They wait for someone to release a product. Then they do something called reverse engineering normally. So they'll actually take the product, take it apart, and work backwards from what the finished product was through to basically how they um, how they got there in the first place. So going backwards. Um, and they're going to release a very similar product to competitors, maybe a bit cheaper because they're trying to, to beat their competitors. Um, however, not really leading the market here. On the flip side of that is what we call innovators. Okay, for example, Apple with their iPhone. Um, they release new products. Okay, and by doing so, they actually lead the market because there's not really much else like them out there. Um, looking at technology as well, now, again, this, this affects the business in a variety of ways. For example, when it comes to administration, um, it allows businesses to uh, organize, plan and control a lot more effectively. Uh, but it also means that they can transform uh, the inputs 
uh, differently as well. New technologies mean that new equipment, new machinery, new automation allows them to um, to change their raw materials into a value-added output a lot more effectively, meaning that uh, they could be able to uh, reduce costs, um, leading to more affordable products for consumers, leading to um, that growth in market share. Uh, and then finally, looking at quality expectations. Now, this is essentially what consumers look for in products, and it could range uh, for a number of things. It could be uh, how well is it designed? Uh, how functional is it? Uh, how competently is it delivered if it's a service? Uh, how clean is the premises? So how clean is the uh, is the shop that they went to? Uh, and how durable it is? Now, uh, quality is different for everybody, okay? Everybody has got different expectations of quality. Um, so it really comes down to what an individual consumer looks for. Now, it is difficult for, for a business to, uh, to cater to everyone's quality expectations. Um, However, this is where uh, later on when we look at um, uh, operations processes, particularly outputs, looking at warranties and, um, and customer service, that that plays a part in it as well. However, um, keeping in mind that people do expect quality in whatever form that may be, that influences the operations management because it means they need to bring in uh, new processes, new machinery, uh, new training for their staff. Um, so uh, I hope this uh, brief video has given you enough information on the influences on operations ma uh, management when it comes to globalization, uh, technology, and quality expectations. Uh, the next video in this uh, HSC operations series looks at, again, influences, uh, however, focuses on cost-based competition, government policies, legal regulation, and environmental sustainability. Thank you.